Hello everyone, it's Magda the Story Spider again. Um, last weekend I was doing a show at the Cafe Coco called That Time of the Month um, and it featured some fabulous other storytellers in addition to myself but there were people missing in the audience, namely my family. Um, I understand that three and a half hours on a Sunday night is a little bit of a distance to drive for an evening's entertainment when you've got work and school the next day. Still, this story is for them because, well, they're featured in it. You have to understand. Uh, I was raised in thrift shops and clothed in the almighty miracle of the clearance rack. Um, my mother is so often at the Goodwill store that is a part of their new clerk's training to learn her name. When she goes to the grocery store, she displays a handful of coupons, like a Vegas gambler displaying a royal flush and just waiting for her personal jackpot to roll right in. During vacation trips, it was a collective effort to keep her attention from all those little garage sale signs that would dot the small town landscapes through which we would pass. For you see, that is my mother's most hungry addiction. Every single Saturday morning of my childhood and my teenage years, I was awoken at, oh my God, in the morning <sighs> by this bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, already fueled by half a pot of black coffee only sweetened by two pink-packaged sweetened lows. Mother. She had been gathering up everything she needed and while I was picking up through my hair she already had a basket full of Nutri-Grain bars and her specialty coffee and a treasure map of all of those yard sales that she had gleaned from the Friday night's Daily Post Athenian want ads. Here we were for the next few hours comparing one grassy spread to another and haggling to get the most momentum out of all of the quarters and coins that she had saved through the winter's off season in her glove compartment. So now you can imagine her delight and thrill when the DPA had a huge advertisement telling her she could get professional photography for her and her three daughters at a discount from none other than Glamour Shots. You remember them, don't you? It, the idea that you could go in and feel like a magazine model for an entire day. Lights, camera, action. They were the Photographic archetype of the 1980s and 90s. Okay, for those of you who don't remember or maybe are a little too young, um, photo, uh, before Photoshop brought cosmetic forgery into our own homes, Glamour Shots was really the only place you could go to make yourself look like any of those film stars you would see at the movies or the television. Um, they would apply these uh, interesting lights and filters. The professionals would add some blurry edges and with a few brush strokes, knock off any of those undesirable features you had and make you look like an entirely different person. So at the time, I was in seventh grade on that budding shelf of puberty. My sister Patty would have been the one in her late 20s and already married to take it upon herself to teach me about the subtle choice and application of makeup. My sister Kathy, in her indirect way, was teaching me about fashion and wardrobe by leaving things at home when um, she had gone to college. And, well, while she was in the house, I was stealing her jewelry at any chance I got. So this idea of going out, spending a day with the big girls, sounded really quite grown up indeed. And I was in seventh grade. I was believing everything that Seventeen Magazine told me about being a teenager. So this was the first outing of Just Us Ladies since the two girls had left home. I couldn't wait. So finally, 
the day arrived and Patty came to pick up me and my mom to, for the drive to Knoxville because, well, Patty drove everywhere outside of the 10-mile radius of our small town. My mother doesn't touch the interstate if she can help it. But besides that, um, it gave them a great opportunity to catch up on community events, i.e. local gossip. You know that very precious southern art of being able to trace genealogy to job history and um, school uh, school attendance and then of course where one goes to church and who is now divorcing whom and how are they were attached to members in our family and how that was going to affect the whole of the community and it was like watching kung fu masters with the speed and grace moving through their positions of crane to tiger to dragon purely amazing an hour long of lessons in this case because then we were in Knoxville meeting my sister Kathy at the West Town Shopping Center my mother led us all into that big boxy building like Dorothy leading her troop into Emerald City we were ready to get our manes curled our nails painted and our eyes dyed to match our dresses and the wizards behind the counter did not disappoint. They gave us innumerable choices. We could finally be perfect. We could finally be beautiful. We could finally be Barbie for all we cared. But let's be honest here. This was 1988. It was all big lights, big hair, and really big makeup. All of us had those bangs that originated about halfway back on our heads and then descended in that voluminous triangle of doom in the front. Height, of course, was at maximum, and you did that by hours of teasing and atmospheres of hairspray. Still, when the makeup, or excuse me, when the, the hair specialists got done with Patty, she was doing her best Louise Mandrell impression. She had this very circular satellite dish of blonde bangs sitting on the middle of her forehead like a jewel in a hair tiara. The makeup artists also did not go for subtle like Patty had taught me. No, it was more of a an airbrush technique you would find on a car hood. Big, bright tubes of lipstick and dark, dark colors of shades and shadows. Sultry shades popped up on my cheekbones and above my eyelashes. Suffice to say, I was thrilled. I mean, here I was, a, a sexy vixen. Um, just wishing those junior high boys could see me now instead of that pale bookworm they were used to. Anyway, the fashion consultants were probably the best because they draped boas around our necks and pulled elbow length gloves up our uh, arms and tried experimenting with lace around our faces. They seriously had everything to suit people's tastes. Um, from my mother, who loved all things girly, to me, the teenager with a growing disdain for the color pink, they had a feminine wardrobe for everyone, as long as it was extremely cheesecake. My sister Kathy was going through a hat phase at the time. Um, to our brother Jack's big Catholic wedding, she caused quite the stir when she showed up with a fedora and her Sunday dress. To her own wedding, she attached, uh, at her own wedding, she attached this, um, her veil to a, a, a cowboy style brim that went well with her straight skirt and big poofy sleeves. Now, we were not surprised in the least bit when she chose a red hat caught teasingly over her short hair and a red leather fringe jacket sliding seductively over one shoulder. 
she would have been perfect in that Joe Cocker music video, if you know what I mean. Then it was my mother's turn in front of the camera. My sisters were cheering her on, telling her to take sexier poses, to push out her chest, and to pout her lips. I swear to you, they would have gotten her to smile even larger if they had just mentioned all the savings she was getting with her coupons. But the weirdest thing was about that moment, well, after we saw the photos, were the two dimples in my mother's cheeks. One on either side of her mouth. I swear to you, she's never had them in any photos before or after. But the most mysterious thing about the whole afternoon was the fact we learned we liked each other. That may not sound strange, but this was my family. They were my mom and my sisters. But we were acting like friends, hanging out at the mall. Could people be more than one thing to one another? This concept had not occurred to me in the least bit. But I guess it works. <laughs> the photos went home, stuffed into photo albums and boxes to be forgotten. But um, maybe we should bring them out again because obviously the kids these days are not learning anything from all the blogs that have all the JPEGs and GIFs dedicated to this art of bad photography. Maybe we should bring out our pictures too. It might discourage this trend of neon and uh, off-the-shoulder t-shirts. <sighs> but then we'd have to tell the rest of the story, wouldn't we? Over the years, we've grown from other future shopping trips to family card games. We're still playing dress up, trying on different roles, encouraging each other to grow. My sister Patty still lives in our small town. She's actually now my mother's Saturday garage sale partner. Every single uh, week they coordinate and um, Patty puts those lovely coordinates that my mother has found in her DPA and her very uh, intense navigation skills. She takes all of those places and addresses and sticks them in her GPS. They will never get lost within the 10 mile radius of our small town. As for Kathy, she moved a little bit uh, uh, further up northeast but still calls my mother weekly, sometimes clocking two hours in a single phone call because she's still wearing different hats. She's, um, she's the co-owner of my brother-in-law's uh, contracting business. She is a state park official. She's the mother of three kids and she's a farmer of cattle and vegetables. I, I think those last two things might go together, but that's a whole different story. As for me, I guess I'm my mom's big travel partner now. Um, live in Nashville, so three and a half hours away. I bring her and my mom, uh, her, and, her and my dad up here as much as I can get, and then I supplement birthday presents with big trips. We go to the Jonesboro National Storytelling Festival. We've been to New York City on a bus tour where I was the youngest person there. That's a whole other story. But you ask me, how, how do I have time or the money to organize any of this? Good question. But you see, I'm my mother's daughter. I can stretch an Appalachian dollar as far as it'll go. As for research, I grew up to be the perfect combination of smart and sexy. I'm a librarian. So I've got this ninja research mojo coming out my fingertips. So these stories could just be stuffed in boxes or into albums and forgotten, just like those photos. But I think there's a value in remembering them. And it has nothing to do with teaching children about the dangers of flock of seagulls haircuts. It's more about the BOGO deal. Buy one, get one free. Because that's what happened that day. We bought an afternoon of lights and hair and makeup, but we got a connection we didn't expect. 
and a lifetime of friendship for free. Thank you very much.